Check it out. The journey continues on my last Midas Haas station. So I've had this question over and over. And in the description, there's a link to a video that I've talked about this before, but I thought I'd include it in this miter saw station video series. How am I gonna tackle the end panel here? Okay, to cover up the screws. So stay tuned. <laughs> also, <laughs> what I do to the interior of the drawer boxes to make them really nice and smooth. So there's two ways of tackling screw cover-up <laughs> or cabinet construction joinery cover-up. One of them is to make a full end panel and tack it in from inside out so you don't see any screws. The way I like to do it, and especially out here in the shop, on all my end panels, I've always put this applied molding. I got it at the big box store. It's readily available. But before I start to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this now if I have any uh, marks on here before I apply the molding. So the paper I'm using to sand, it'll be my final sanding. I'm gonna choose 150 grit and then I will apply my coating in the future to the outside of this. So with this molding, we're going to put a 45 on here and I'll show you two ways of measuring this. So you probably know this, but I just wanna point out, <laughs> point. That is the long point and that's the short point. So the first way to measure this, it's pretty simple. Get a good accurate tape and we're going to do a full mitre wrap. We're basically putting a big picture frame on here. And when I look from long, you got to remember from long point to long point is how we're going to cut. This measurement is 672. You probably remember that from a former video. So there's another way of measuring this, okay? I've taken that long point and I've put it perfectly flush where I want it. And what I like to do is hold it in tension, okay? And then come right over here and make a mark, okay? And when I do that, just like that, okay? I always do this so I don't get disorientated at the miter saw. I go like this because I need that to be my long point. See that, I do a quick 45 on there because I know this is basically my waist. So when I bring it over, I get my mark right here. And one of the nice things about this laser on this saw is when I bring it down like this, okay, and I line it up, it actually goes right on my mark because this laser shines right on the front of the molding. So I'm just gonna lock it down and make the cut. So it's pretty simple, just a little wood glue. I'm gonna put it in just like this and I'm gonna bring that long point perfectly to the end. This is a great cut. Now, I truly believe that one of the greatest tools to come out <laughs> in the last 20 years is a micro pinner, okay? Because it's perfect, this is the perfect application. I removed the tip. This is a non-miring tip with a center line, but I removed it because I want that point. And where I'm going to place it is right here on the molding. And boy, while that glue sets up, you can't even see that micro pin. It's a 23 gauge, by the way. And I've had these guns for a long time. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we get this side, I just turned the cabinet, we mitered another piece of molding to fit in there, and now we're just going to make our mark and we're just gonna go around and do our cover up. All right, so one of the things I wanna definitely point out on any miter saw, always use, especially when you're doing crisp miters like this, that really count, <laughs> is always use a hold down. Because I could have really held this in place, but the physics of the saw wants to push that, and your long or your short points won't ever meet up. 
there'll always be a space. This way there you're insured and you've taken yourself out of the mix. So when you're setting molding this, sometimes off of the miter saw, you get a little bit of, of fuzz. What I like to do is very lightly with a high, higher grit is knock that fuzz off. That way there, it doesn't keep you away from your miter. So the last piece is always kind of tricky. So what I like to do is make sure I'm in this miter over here. And then I take my pencil and I mark it long. Okay, see I want it to end up on this point right here. I want to mark it long and then what we'll do, it's known as creeping to the cut. I did my first cut and I want to do my final fit. So I have it in here, but you're going to see how that's still proud. And what I'm do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly nibble this in for a final fit. So this is where people get overly anxious and take too big a cut. I always say creep up to it. So I'll take little nibbles at this. And that's why I love the laser here. I can really very, very cautiously uh, get my final cut. So that was my second cut. Let's bring it in. I'm just shy. It's okay. What do they say? Third time's the charm. I'm going to bring that right in. I'm flush here. Long point to long point meet up here. I'll come in absolutely spot on. All right. So there you go. That's how we do it. I'm going to take a little wood filler and put in those little teeny tiny uh, nail holes. And now we get three more of these end panels to do. So the type of wood fill I like to use is this Timbamate um, wood filler. And this is a lighter color for this uh, birch I'm using. And right here, here's this 23 gauge pen. I'm just going to take it and go like this. And that'll disappear, especially with that paint we use. I'll do a little bit of sanding in there with a sanding fin. And we'll do that. See how they just disappear? But while I have it out, here's another tip that I've done with all my drawer boxes. See, look, look how nice that is. Remember when we used the domino, we went from the outside in, but sometimes you still get a little bit of tear out. So what I like to do is just take some of this filler and this stuff dries fairly quick. Just take it like this. And when I sand that, it'll, that tear out virtually disappears. So I'll do that as we go through the drawers. And now on to the next tip of doing our drawers. Okay, so that's how we tackle the end panel and the cover up with the applied molding. Also, we have to do this three more times. So follow me on this. Here we don't have to do it because the other boxes bang together. I want to do it on this side. I know it may be overkill, but who cares? I'm going to do it on this side and on this side. Now, the next step we're going to take is a little uh, attention to detail that I want to do. And I'll pull this one out because I've already done this bay here. We're going to put a round over on this. Okay, so we don't have any sharp edges reaching into the uh, drawer box. So hang in there. What we want to do is we want to create a round over on here, but this is a very tricky thing to do because if I'd use like a handheld trim router, you'd have that balance issue, right? So what I'll suggest, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do utilize a router table. I'll show you my technique on doing this. I want to maximize my service. If you have a larger router table, it's better because you can continually have good balance on it. Okay, I installed a 3 8 round over bit. And what I always do is I took my burn box, my original box that I had just thrown together to do tests on, and I ran it, and I'll show you. So this is a delicate situation with a router table because I have no fencing. 
I always remember, because I have an arrow here that points in the direction which way I'm going to carry the box. But here's the situation I have when I put this on and I get to certain areas, it wants to tilt off. So what you have to be aware is when I turn this on and I set this down, I bring it in like this and I'll be holding it here and supporting it all the way around and being aware that I support it on the deck of the router table. And you can see where I'm going like this to maximize my support all the way around. So I'm gonna turn her on. Okay. I wanna make sure I keep that pressure down on the edge of that bearing. And I'll pull up here. And if you get into a tricky situation, you can pick it up and set it back down again. So let's take a look. And I'll tell you, what I do is I do the the feel <laughs> all the way around to see if I have it right. And it just came out very consistent. And I'll show you how to sand this in in just a couple moments. Oh boy, we got quite a few more to do. So it's just really simple. The next step is I come over and I make sure there were no irregularities on the, um, the route. But what I want to do is just knock off some of that, as I call it, some of the, the roughness to it. And you can do it one of two ways. You can use uh, a sponge backed um, sandpaper like this. I got 180 is what I use, or I prefer to use the RO90 and the random orbit with a uh, interface pad and it makes really quick work of this because that profile conforms to that round over and it just makes it wicked quick to do. And you'll see there's a little burn mark in there that goes away and it just works really slick. I especially like the detail right here in the corner. It's just really smooth. So I only have 16 more drawers to go, <laughs> but hopefully this video gave you some info on how to finish the end of a cabinet, but also how to break the inside edge here with a nice gentle round over for a little bit of more attention to detail. Hey, as we always say in the Sedge Tool Shop, <laughs> Be positive, stay sharp, and we mean wicked sharp.